Welcome to the narrated step-by-step -step tutorial for my painting, Quiet Bog. The photograph on the right was the reference and inspiration for this painting. While I often used uh, masking fluid uh, to create textures in my landscapes, I decided that wasn't going to be the best option for this particular subject. So this painting will be uh, simply direct painting. I begin by doing a light pencil sketch on a quarter sheet 11 inches by 15 inches of 140 pound cold press Lanacoral watercolor paper. I have drawn the major shapes in the composition. I begin with a light valued wash on the sky and water areas. The, the color mixture I'm using is a, a very light mixture using some cerulean blue, some raw sienna, and some cobalt blue. So the, the raw sienna uh, tones down the blue just a little bit and the, and the cerulean blue tones down the, the raw sienna. So it gives me a, a warm, cool, neutral effect almost. A, a bluish gray and a, and a light, warm uh, gray. And that's what I've put in the sky. And I've added just a touch of cobalt blue to strengthen the color a little bit in this uh, this wash that I'm putting here at the bottom. So I want my darkest area to be uh, in the bottom for the water. So I'm actually um, working from the bottom up. And my board is at about a, a 15 to 20 degree angle. That's how I normally work. And uh, by putting this wash in this manner, uh, the, the uh, pigment is going to flow downwards and uh, the, the, the heaviest pig, pigmentation is going to be towards the, the bottom of my composition which is what I'm after and I also lighten the mixture as I go up uh, the page. Here I've added just a touch of royal blue to the mixture to deepen the tone a little bit. And I'm just putting some some um, subtle touches of this color in this wet and wet mixture that I've already applied to the paper. My paper is thoroughly dried now with a hair dryer, and I'm going to begin to paint this uh, tree line that's in the background. I'll be using a, a variety of colors, including sap green. Pyro Red, Royal Blue, Raw Umber, Raw Sienna, and a little Quinacridin Coral. And at times I'll use some Quinacridin Gold. So I'll use a combination of those colors in the mixes that I'm using right now. And I'm applying this initially here with a one inch flat brush. The, I'm, I'm painting this, it's a pretty much a, uh, the tree line is one big shape. And um, as the trees come down towards the bottom, they just merge into one shape. However, it does retain the characteristics of the treetops on the leading on the top edge of this this tree line. So, while I start with a flat brush here, I'll come back uh, as I am here with a quill brush, and I'll uh, define the tops of the the tree line a little bit. Um, uh, better with some more detail and clarity. So at the tops of this tree line you'll you'll have kind of the, the indication that um, you have tree tops and then as they come together they just merge together into one shape. So I don't carry that individual characteristic all the way down to the base of the tree. I don't paint a bunch of side-by-side -side trees like a picket fence because that's not really how you see it in the distance. Here I continue with a quill brush along the tops and I'm starting to lighten my mixture a little bit and I'm going to bring in some uh, a little bit of uh, some red tones uh, there's hints of that in the in the tree line in my reference so I'm going to have touches of some cooler greens some warmer greens some kind of kind of earthy red tones and then here there's a, uh, 
a lighter tree that's more of a yellow green. So I'm going to put that one in. And this is actually a mixture of cadmium yellow light and sap green. And after I've put that down, I'm going to bring some of these darker, cooler tones around that, that lighter kind of lemon yellow, lemon or yellow green shape that I've painted. You can also see that red tone to the left of that in the top of that tree. So trying to create some variety and some interest in this tree line. It's not just one flat uh, tone. So even though it's one big shape, there's a lot of variation going on within it in terms of color and value. Here I'm painting the, continuing with the tops of these trees. And I'm going to take my brush and just tap it on my hand to give just a little bit of splatter. It uh, just creates a more natural appearance, I feel. That you, if, you, if you just do it all with a brush, sometimes it can look a little mechanical and contrived. And, and just a little splatter helps make it feel a little bit more natural. Here I've continued on and I'm back to my big brush and I'm using a mixture that has a, is a little closer to the, the pure sap green. It still has a little bit of uh, uh, cad yellow light in it and uh, then I'm going to bring in a, still some more uh, cooler greens just to float into this wash of the, of the lighter yellow, kind of yellow green tone that I have. So I work wet on dry to start normally, but as I get going, I, I often end up working wet in wet as I am here. I've, I've put down this large shape, but I'm working other colors into it in a wet, in a wet and wet uh, manner. Here I'm still using the one inch flat brush and I'm using a darker valued mixture here now and uh, taking that all the way to the edge. So this large tree line actually runs from the left side of my composition to the right side. And here I'm going to add just a little bit more splatter again just to give it a little more natural characteristic. I'm going to begin to paint some of these rock shapes now. I'm using my half inch brush and uh, I'm using combinations of raw sienna, cerulean blue, raw umber, royal blue, and at times I'll put a touch of rose matter uh, quinacridone in there. And as I paint these, I like to paint them as large shapes, as individual shapes, and, and with, a, with a varied wash of warm and cool colors. I kind of let that those colors mix on the paper. And here you can see uh, the mixture that I have has a little bit of uh, quinacridone rose matter in it. It has a bit of a a reddish purplish tone and I don't overwork these I just uh, I, I pay attention to the light source and and, and uh, put a darker value on the shadow side and, and try to leave often some of the warmer tones lighter tones on the side where the, the light would be hitting now I have a a bit of a cooler mixture here that I'm going to uh, paint some of these shapes with with touches of warm to warm color. A few of those further back I have uh, a more dominant warm tone on those shapes and uh, these here that are closer I have uh, opted to to keep a little a uh, little darker and cooler. And as I make uh, uh, my brush strokes, you'll notice that I use different parts of the brush. Sometimes I, sometimes I use the end, sometimes I just tilt it at an angle and, and use, uh, with, in, incorporate more of the side in the brush stroke. Other times I'll use the, just the, the corner just to almost draw with or just make a, a small uh, shape just by touching the corner. So you can really get a lot out of a, out of a, some some of your brushes a lot more than what people get out of them. You can do quite a bit with a flat brush. I like to use a one inch and a half inch flat brush uh, frequently. Here I've moved to this uh, rock shape to the left. 
So I'm going to have my darkest values more in the foreground here. You'll see that some of those colors that are in the tree line that as I was putting them down, uh, putting them down seem very dark. As they dry, they really are more of a, a middle value to dark middle value compared to uh, some of these very dark values that I'm putting down now in the foreground. There's, there's quite a bit of difference. On this particular uh, rock shape here, I'm uh, putting a warmer tone uh, over a larger area than I have the other ones. It's just in a position where it seems to be absorbing some of the, the this warmth of, from the sunlight. And I'll load my brush with a cooler mixture here. This mixture has some raw sienna, but it has more uh, cerulean blue, a little bit of uh, royal blue, and uh, with, with, with some of this, I'm, I'm mixing in a little bit of uh, burnt sienna, just a touch of that to help uh, gray down some of the blue. I've painted uh, a few more of the rock shapes and I've inserted the reference photo now and I'm, I'm taking a dark value and defining the edge there uh, kind of in the middle ground of uh, what is, is in fact a part of this waterway. It kind of winds around this, this area, of kind of a boggy area here. And uh, it has a bit of an edge over there, and there's a little bit, and the water is in front of that. And I'm just going to give a slight indication of that as I continue to move through my painting process. Here I have a little bit more uh, of some of the, the rocky edge that's there in the distance. Now I'm putting a touch more of that dark value there and I'm going to take my plastic scraping tool and I'm going to scrape upwards to uh, give a suggestion of uh, uh, the, the a grassy um, texture that, that's coming up over those rocks. So I'm going to do that over here too. Just a slight indication that there's, there's some weeds and some grass and, and briar or whatnot there. Um, and it just gives a slight indication of that. And just as I, I've scraped up over here, I'm actually scraping down, and that will uh, create a, a, a negative texture that, as I put a lighter uh, color, a lighter glaze in that white area, uh, it, it will give the, the suggestion of kind of a grassy top to that because I've scraped this dark value downward, leaving a, a, a jagged edge that gives a representation of again a, a, a grassy area so some some places I've scraped up so it gives the impression that it's, it's the, the silhouette of some grassy shapes and other areas I've scraped down which will go into the tops of some lighter uh, valued areas and give the suggestion that those have some grassy tops to them Now I'm going to take some of the brighter tones that are in that area. This is a mixture of sap green with a little bit of cad yellow light in it. And I'm taking a, a half inch flat brush and just making some brush marks there. And uh, that direction helps define the contour uh, that's there, that, that's somewhat of a flat contour. And there's a variety of tones there. There's, that's quinacridone gold and some raw umber and some, some darker green mixtures all uh, kind of mingling together on that paper. As I make these brush marks, my brush is, is loaded, uh, really saturated. So when I, when I make a brush mark, it covers the area. 
you shouldn't find yourself scrubbing to try and cover the, the, the paper when doing this. If you are, you don't have enough paint on your brush and, and I suspect not enough paint probably even mixed on your palette. You can't get the same results by taking a little brush and trying to, to scrub and scrub and, and fill the area up. It, it's, uh, you just can't get the same effect that you do with a nice uh, confident brush stroke. Here I'm bringing in some darker values on the edge. So I'm, I'm taking some, some color back into the areas where I just painted, where it's still wet. And I let that paint just kind of flow within the, the wet areas of the paper. And uh, the mixture that I'm gonna use now is um, a uh, some more of the uh, cad yellow with a green and it has some some touches of quinacrid and gold with quinacrid and coral mixed in and that's what I have here so I'm letting that um, just merge with the brush strokes I already put down so I'm not going to get any hard edges because I'm I'm taking this very uh, saturated brush and and make my brush stroke right into the edge of the area where I just painted where it's already wet so you get a nice gradation of color. And I'm using a one inch flat brush here. And this is a soft wash brush. So even though I'm going back into some areas, I'm just laying in some pigment. I'm not scrubbing them or, or overworking them. I'm just trying to get some colors mingled in there. And now I'm gonna take my scraping tool and give some more of the suggestion of, of some, some grassy uh, shapes here and textures and you can see where I've applied this light green down in those areas where I took that dark value and scraped it downward I, I, I've created the, the, the top of those uh, in a manner that they, they look like they're the tops of grassy shapes because of that texture that I have put in there by scraping down. Here I'm going to create the slight suggestion of some ripples in the water by doing some lifting. So I'm going to lighten some areas of this initial wash that I put down by taking a uh, uh, it, it's a somewhat stiff but not not a bristly brush but it's a it's a nylon flat brush about a three quarter inch nylon flat brush and uh, I'm just going to I'm taking clear water and just agitating the surface there a little bit and then I come in with a tissue and just rub the paper or strike against it to lift some of that pigment. But it's just giving me a, a variation of a light tone in this wash. And as I progress through the painting process, I'll also bring in uh, a little uh, darker tone, slightly darker blue tones to, to uh, complement some of these lighter areas that I'm lifting. Now I want to put a much darker value at the base of these grassy areas and behind some of these rocks uh, to really anchor that kind of bog area uh, along the waterway here and uh, set it back a little bit from these rock shapes. So I'm just taking a dark mixture with some royal blue, a little raw umber, actually a little alizarin crimson in it to, to give it a, a slightly warmer tone. But I'm, I'm placing this wash behind the rocks and again at the base of this, uh, this grass. And then I'm going to soften those edges up a little bit. So I've got that value in there. Now I've got some water on my brush. I'm going to soften those edges. And while that clear water on the brush softens those edges a little bit, I'm also going to take a, a fine mist spray, a fine mist spray bottle, and uh, spray upwards and diffuse that color a little bit. So it softens the edges more than just the brush and, and diffuses some of that dark value up into the grassy areas. Hey, 
and here I'm doing a little bit more and again the spray soften that edge and I'm going to take uh, that same mixture it's, it's a little redder I've got a little bit more of a red tone to it as I move over here and again kind of anchor the, the grassy edge a little bit and set it back from the rocks that are there and then soften the edge once again now I'm going to take my half inch flat brush with a dark value mixture here similar to what I've been using and I'm going to um, give the suggestion of these kind of dark uh, reflections into the water that are, are kind of rippled so they're they're dark valued and they're, they're they tend to be very horizontal um, but they're picking up some of that dark value from the land and it's reflecting down into the water but it's being broken up by the ripples so um, some of these shapes are a little larger than others uh, some of them are, are, are fairly large areas where I filled in and then I, I break that edge up with uh, with narrow bands of dark value using the edge of my half inch brush to represent the, the dark ripples in the water and, and as it breaks up the, the reflection of the rocks or the grass I also mix some uh, some quinacrid and gold into this to pick up uh, kind of some some glowing tones into this this dark area in the water and again it's uh, suggesting the reflection of uh, what's what's around it some of the rocks and the shoreline there um, but it's, it's quite dark and the, these ripples break right into the edge of some of the other rock shapes. As I put uh, down these uh, these reflections, I want to make sure that I take this all the way to the edge. Uh, sometimes people tend to forget about the edge. It's it's a your your composition goes all the way to to the four edges, and sometimes that's forgotten, and you end up with a floating composition. So make sure that uh, whatever. Uh, activity you have going in your composition that you don't ignore the edges and just let it float in the middle um, take that take your composition from edge to edge unless you're intention intentionally uh, using a vignette but otherwise you want to make sure your composition goes edge to edge here I'm uh, taking some more uh, well that dark value to, to suggest some reflections here this this dark right here is a little cooler than some of those I was putting closer to the shore because those near the shore have uh, some of those gold tones and green tones reflecting down into there and uh, this not so much it's just more the bottom of the rock underside of the rock and the edge of the rock um, so well, I have a little bit of gold in some of those uh, some of those I've chose just to stay very very dark, very cool. I'm going to take my half inch flat brush and I'm going to take some more of this dark value, some warm, some cool, and I'm going to place some of those darker values in the, the grassy areas to extend the value range a little bit and to give a little more depth uh, and bulk to what's going on in these grassy areas because they're they're all very much the same going across and can feel very flat so I'm breaking this area up a little bit with some of these uh, darker valued brush marks you can see as I do this it, it becomes less of a flat shape and starts to have some more volume some, and some deep pockets of value that could be um, just little recessed areas in this but 
gives more dimension to these um, grassy areas. Now I'm going to take a, a cool mixture and I'm going to uh, first I'm take placing that dark value at the base of that rock again to make it feel a little bit more anchored but I'm going to take a kind of a cool blue tone here middle value on the back side of that rock to put a little bit more in shadow and I'm going to do the same with this rock that's closer in the foreground so you can see this is a is a uh, it's a blue tone but it's moving towards uh, neutral and I've used it in combination with uh, a gray that's a bit of a warmer gray and just deepening the value a little bit on this this backside shadow side of the rock it's uh, it's still a middle value. It's not near as dark as some of the, the other darks that I've placed around the composition. Now I'm coming in with a, kind of a light middle value blue tone. Uh, it's some of the, the cerulean, raw sienna with a, a touch of royal blue in it. And I'm using my half inch flat brush and I'm making some brush marks here to kind of accent and, and complement some of the lighter areas where I lifted off uh, earlier in my process and staying with a horizontal uh, motion as I, as I apply these uh, brush strokes here again I'm taking it down to the lower edge I'm not stopping short As I put this down, these aren't just straight, thin lines. They they vary in shape and size and width, and and um, otherwise, it's very looks, looks very forced. You just put a bunch of straight lines that all look the same there. So I try to vary the length of the the little ripples, and uh, I try to try to think about. Um, what's being reflected or what's impacting an area that's creating that darker value and the rippling of the water uh, when I put these down but just very uh, loosely uh, just kind of moving my brush side to side and uh, here I'm just putting some smaller marks down Now, as I've done in some of these other areas, I want to uh, build a little more depth, a little more volume in this distant tree line. It still feels a little flat, even though it has variation going on. And I want it to set back a little bit more from uh, the grassy areas in front of it. So I'm just taking a, a round brush here and loading it up with a kind of a dark value green tone. It's kind of a blue green. And I'll have some some warmer mixtures too, but um, just uh, using my brush stroke to to, su to suggest the direction um, of the trees, to the, more of the verticality. So as I was putting in the ripples in the water, I had a very horizontal brush stroke, and now I'm trying to suggest the, what's going on in these trees. My, my brush strokes for the most part tend to be vertical in, in nature although I go uh, kind of side to side as I fill in the base of it and now I'm taking that spray bottle and softening those edges just a bit and as I extend this down you can see while I have a horizontal brush stroke, stroke along the bottom to give a clean edge my, my other brush strokes tend to be more up and down uh, to suggest that the, the, the trees here and their, their vertic the verticality of the, uh, the trees. Here I've continued this activity down the tree line and now I'm softening the edges and starting to feather that out and let that uh, the, the left side of that uh, kind of be.
Now I've dried this thoroughly with a hairdryer, and I'm going to take about a half inch uh, angled nylon flat brush that has uh, some water and it's damp. It's not uh, it's not dripping wet. It's just damp, uh, and I'm just going to do some lifting into the the, the tree line here. Uh, creates just a slightly lighter value and gives a suggestion of tree trunks. Again, you don't want this loaded to the point that when you touch it to the paper it drops a bead of water. You want it more in a damp state so it's wet um, but it, it maintains an edge so you as you agitate the pigment it removes it in a narrow band and then when you come back with a tissue it lifts that off. And when you make marks like this you don't want it to look like a picket fence so you start some higher than others, some low, you, you change the spacing, you change the length of them, maybe change the angle slightly, but you want them to look different, not like a, a like I said, a picket fence there where you just have a bunch of sticks that are all the same width. And there I did some lifting just to create a bit of an edge on that tree shape. And here I'm doing a little bit more lifting, not quite as much, but just a touch. To, to, to just to introduce some vertical elements into that shape down on that end. So while that lifting created some lighter areas of interest, some vertical shapes, um, I'm, I want to do some of the, the same with some darker shapes. So I'm taking my liner brush, loaded up with a dark mixture, and I'm just giving a suggestion of some of these um, dead trees that you see sticking up amongst some of the evergreens and pines and uh, again I want to I want some variety here with these I want these uh, to, to not all look the same again I want to pick a fence so uh, the, the length is a little different the place where they start and stop is a little different um, the angles I shift those a little bit and in some places I'll, I'll break up that vertical trunk into a couple segments just create some variation but but it provides some interest to what was a, a fairly flat shape so if you think about that that tree line it was it was a, a wash it had a lot of variation in it but uh, not so, not so much in value and I, I came in with some values to build some depth and now I've come in and put some vertical elements in here to provide a little more interest a little more overlap every time you can overlap you start to to create uh, more of a feeling of depth in your composition. While I have my rigger brush and some of this darker value, I'm going to take the opportunity here to uh, strengthen some of the textures and patterns that I have in this grassy area. So I'm taking this dark value and just making some brush marks to further define some of these grassy uh, shapes, some of these linear marks that represent the, the grass, the weeds, some of the little saplings uh, growing out of this uh, brush. Now I'm going to put some finishing touches on my painting. I've got my quill brush that I like to use and I've loaded it with a dark value. And I'm going to move about my composition just putting some touches of, of value, dark value, in areas where I feel it can help. There's areas where uh, I want to strengthen an edge or if I want stronger contrast in an area. Um, they could be l linear marks, they could be little shapes, they could be vertical marks, they could be angular. Um, sometimes they're little dot dashes just to provide a little bit more of, of uh, a harder edge or suggested detail. So here I'm going to uh, just make a few little marks, dark valued marks on the, the side of this already a, a very dark middle valued area but just to give a suggestion of some cracks in the rocks and it doesn't take much just little touches here and there and I like to do that this a lot or often towards the end of my painting process and here I'm uh, adding a little bit more to this area of uh, reflection in the water I just want to bring that out just a little bit more. These are just small touches that I put in towards the end of my, my process. And I'm going to put a white mat on this so you can get a good look. And there you have my painting 
quiet bog. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you want the reference material, you can go to the home page of my online learning center. At the top, you'll find a link to my YouTube reference. If you have questions about my supplies, you can always go to the studio page of my website, rsurwitzart.com. And if you have questions, you can email me at contactrsurwitzart at gmail.com. Thanks for watching.